Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dermar again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with machine learning in Unity by using ML Agents. I'm also gonna show you the results that you see playing behind the scenes, and we're gonna be walking you through every single step of the process. I'm gonna show you how the levels look like before they actually had a chicken and a car and also the area that you see playing. And I'm also going to show you how each one of these components work. We're gonna be looking at the agent, we're gonna be looking at the car, how do I actually move the cars, what are some of the observations that we have to make? What are some of the options that we have to take? So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right guys, I'm really excited about this video because I think you're going to enjoy the setup that I have and hopefully I'm gonna be able to teach you how machine learning works in this example. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and hit play and see how the game runs. I have six different areas that are going to run. So the goal is to get the chicken over here, right? And this is using ML agents. So you can see that the first time out, we get one point, Let's see if it makes it again. That one is making it. This is also changing to green as it reaches the goal. If it doesn't reach the goal, this is gonna be red. That means that we didn't accomplish the goal. We hit either a tree or we hit a car. So see how cool that is? That actually stops before the car keeps going. The, the reason for that is because machine learning is, is learning that it needs to wait before the car goes through and then he can just keep you know, going forward. So I have other ones in here that you can also see. Let's see how this one is doing here. This one is doing good too. It's so far, I'm not seeing negative number. It didn't do that well the last time, but that one is doing okay. This one's green. Let's see that one over there. This one just passed through. And I think beyond, you know, overall they're doing, they're doing a good job. You know, 10 episodes, 9.98, step count about, you know, nearly 3000. So, there's a lot of things going on in here, so let me go ahead and hit play. And so the goal for this video is, like I said, I wanna show you how you would go about approaching something like this. And before we start digging into it, I want to show you also a tweet that I tweeted when I started working on this. So I would say always start doing something simple, just like I did here. I just had a sphere and then a couple of you know, blocks that resemble the cars and then my goal. So I wanted to keep it simple and then that turned out to be this because I swapped all the you know, all the different 3D elements to make it look more like a, like a real game. So I wanted to make a cross the road game that was completely managed by machine learning and I was able to accomplish that. So I'm pretty happy about it. So hopefully what I'm gonna about to teach you, it's going to make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I have this screenshot here that we're going to be looking at. And some of the things that you need to consider is what is it that you're going to be observing. In our case, we need to know that each one of these, so let me go ahead and jump into my, in my tablet. So each one of these we're gonna to have to track, right? In this case, we're gonna to have to track this. We're going to have also have to track this other car. We also need to know that in this case, there's gonna be a tree here. So we need to know that there's a tree. We also need to know that we need to get to this area right here, at least if I can, there we go. It's basically gonna be all that area, including, you know, including this area right here. So anything in that area that I'm kind of, that I'm kind of crossing, it's going to be, you know, the goal. So we need to, we need to say, we need to tell the agent that the agent needs to reach a goal. So that's going to be an observation that you need to make. We also need to tell the agent that there's gonna be cars on the way. We also need to tell the agent, you know, that anything, anything that is moving, we need to be observing. So in this case, we, we're a chicken. So the agent is going to be this guy right here. And the agent in our case is gonna be a chicken. So we need to find out where are we gonna be going to and like what directions we need to take. So when I started developing this, I, I, I was asking that question. I'm like, okay, how far do I need to go? And, and do I need to use, you know, physics to move the agent? Do I want to use, you know, just changing the vector position to change the agent position? And those are some questions that you need to be asking yourself when, before you're gonna be developing something like this, because I got really frustrated when I started and I didn't really know where to go. So. The first thing that I decided to do is, okay, I need to know how the agent is gonna move. So I know that the agent is going to move in that direction. Oops, let me do that one more time. It's going to move in that direction. It's also going to be moving in that direction. And it's also going to be moving in that direction. So, so far the agent has three different directions that it can move to, but you know, there's times when I want the agent to also stay idle. So I wanted, I wanted another direction which he actually is not going anywhere, but he's staying idle. So that is going to be another direction. So, so far we have four different directions that we can go to, but I don't want to allow the agent to go back. So I'm not going to allow the agent basically to do that. 
So when you're thinking about these, you got to consider those variables. Okay, the agent cannot go back. The agent is going to move left, it's going to move to the right, it's going to move forward. And then when you're designing your level, you basically need to design it in a way that is going to be easier for you to, to write the logic, right? So in my case, I the logic was going to be, you know, if I encounter any one of these trees, I'm going to be taking points away. So when I say points, I'm talking about rewards. So if I get to if I get to here, we're going to be doing plus a reward. It's just gonna say plus R. And then if I'm right here, it's going to be minus R. And minus R meaning that we're taking a reward away, and then plus is gonna be we're giving a reward, and then of course if we're hitting a car, it's gonna be minus R. If we're hitting another car, it's gonna be minus R. And then, you know, the same way here, if I'm hitting any of this car, it's going to be minus R. So we need to consider those variables, okay? I have a reward that I'm gonna be achieving here if I reach the goal. And I'm just gonna denote that by saying this is the goal. And then the cars, of course, are gonna be the negative ones because we don't wanna hit them. And anything in here, like in this area, there's gonna be a wall that it's transparent. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. That's also going to be giving you a negative reward. And the same way on this area right here, there's gonna be walls all the way across. I'm just gonna do a square here. But it's gonna be a negative reward. And then of course, if you if you go back here to any of this area from here and on to here, it's going to be a negative reward. So we're just gonna do negative R. So think about this, right? There's a lot of different things that we need to that we need to be considering, but thankfully, because of machine learning and ML agents, it's actually not that complicated. You just need to make sure that you're covering all those. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity, and I'm going to show you how this works behind the scenes. All right, guys, so let's take a look at how this is set up and how each one of these areas are organized. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the cross the road area. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of things in here to consider. The aging is the first object that I'm gonna be looking at. He has a sphere. He also has what's called a perception ray. So this perception ray, it's called Ray Perception Sensor 3D, is the one that is sending the rays across, you know, all these different degrees. So you can see there's a ray going across to that tree, and that means that we need to tell the agent as much information of the, about the environment as he can. So in this case, there's a ray that is hitting the tree, so we know that that is a tree. There's also another ray on this angle hitting that, and then as the engine moves forward, he's basically sampling everything that he's around. So if I move to the left, you're gonna see that there's a ray that now collides with the car. So now he knows that there's a car there. And then as he moves through the area, at some point he's gonna reach the goal. And then we know that we hit the goal. So we got, you know, we got we're gonna give a reward to the to the chicken. So let me go ahead and go back. Let's go ahead and undo this and undo this. So this component has, like I said, a sphere collider. It has a rigid body. It also has a behavior parameters. And I show you that in the previous video, but this is basically what we're gonna be telling the agent what the behavior name is gonna be. So if we have multiple areas, which I show you by going back to the scene, each one of these is going to have a player. So if I go here, you can see that the player has this cross the road behavior ID. That's also going to match the ID of this other area. And the reason for that is because I needed to I want to make sure that I train and I train as fast as I can. So by having more areas, you're going to have more data sent to the academy. And then the brain is going to basically exercise itself in a faster or, or a quicker manner. So let's go ahead and go back into, into here. So that's what the behavior is. You also decide how many observations we're going to have for, for this behavior. So if we look at the agent code, let me go ahead and pull that here and we look at the crossroad agent, this is gonna be the script that basically manages the, the agent. This one right here, it's going to be the one that it's going to be collecting the observations. It's also going to be telling basically the movement, everything that, that the agent is to know about, is going to be set up in here. So a couple of things to consider in here, like I was saying, is the observation. So let's go ahead and go and look at some of these variables. So we need to decide how fast the aging is gonna move, so I basically have a speed. I also have a step amount. The step amount is important because I wanna know how far the aging is going to move. This is not how fast, but how far we're gonna go. Are we gonna go one meter away? Are we gonna go two meters away? Are we gonna go five meters away? So if we go back to the player and we look at the, the actual aging itself, let me go ahead and look at the aging. 
You can see that the step amount is five, and there's a reason that there is five meters on every step is because I designed this level to be that way. Meaning that if I go five steps forward, so we change this to say a five, I know that that's gonna be a step. So if I change it to 10, I know that it's gonna be another step. So if I change this to 15, so I know there's gonna be a collision there. So that means that we have three steps going forward. But if I do 20, and let's say that the agent went left and then forward, and then forward, then you know that, you know, that you're designing a level in a way that it's going to be able to be beaten by the agent. So you need to make sure that your coordinates, that your, you know, how much, how far you're gonna go, need to basically resemble how the, how the world is gonna work as it relates to the agent. So let me go ahead and go back to zero. So it's really important that you get these coordinates correct. Like in my case, this is gonna be a distance of five. So if we go five, you know, you don't wanna go five and all the way fall off a cliff because that wouldn't be fair for the agent, right? So let me go ahead and go back here. And they, this also denotes what I explained to you here. So if we go forward, we're going forward, you know, five meters. So it's gonna be a plus five. If I go forward again here, this is gonna be another plus five. So now we're gonna be the step count is going to be is going to be 10 because we already went 10 meters away. So a couple more things in here. This is basically UI. I, I show you the reward value, how many episodes we have completed, and then also how many steps we have completed because it's important. This is really important because we need to know, you know, at what point the agent is learning, and that's going to come in handy when you start looking at things like these, like TensorBoard, where in order for me to be able to train the agent. It took me about one million, you know, one million step count, meaning that we went through one million different steps to be able to train this agent to a point that I was getting, you know, close to 0.92. And, and that's really important because I know that at least 92% of the time the agent is getting to a goal. So to me, that is a successful train model. Anything lower than that, like if I get 70, I'm not really comfortable. But I had a question from somebody in Twitter and they said, Dilmer, so how do you actually manage difficulty of the agents? And if you have an AI game and you want some, you know, some enemies to be easier, then in that case, you may want 70%. In other cases, you may want 92% because you want them to fail more in some instances, right? So anyways, let me go ahead and keep going. So this is for the UI. Then this is a reference to the, to the actual goal because we need to know if we are hitting the goal. The other things I also keep track of is the overall reward, overall steps also a vector tree to, to see how far we're gonna be moving to and what direction we're gonna be moving to. So this is gonna have the target, the, the target lo location where the, the, the actual chicken is gonna move to. So in our case, if we go back here, if I need to go mo move forward and then I'm gonna be landing in here, the move to variable is going to be holding that value. So this is gonna be an X, Y, and Z value here that is going to have that position. So that's what this is. Original position is so I know how to go back. So if I go back into here, it's so I know, you know, where the agent needs to start. So that's what this variable is gonna be for. A agent rigid body so that I can control physics. I don't believe I'm doing, I'm moving the agent through physics anymore. So to be honest, I could remove, I could remove that from the player itself. I'll do that, just do a to-do. Remove this since it is not used. And then I'll do that all the way, all the way across and, and check it in so you guys can, can clone it. So, and I'm also going to be putting this, this code in GitHub so you guys can download it for free. So no, you know, if you don't, you didn't capture anything that I cover in here, just make sure that you clone the code. So the other thing that we're not gonna be using, well, we're not gonna be using that. This one is basically important because of the way that I implement it. So if I am moving the agent and let's say that I'm moving the agent from here to here, I wanna make sure that I'm doing that in a way that, that I can I can basically track the steps. So I'll show you how that code works. I think it's gonna make it easier for me to explain. And then the direction, this is what's going to be coming in from TensorFlow and from the Academy. It's gonna tell me where I need to move to. So I'm gonna move forward, I'm gonna to move to the left, I'm gonna to move to the right, or I'm just gonna be idle. And then I also have an enum here representing you know, the direction. So if I'm idle, if I'm left, if I'm right, or if I'm moving forward, then this is going to be holding those values. And then this is gonna be just a private instance that it's going to be holding the current state of the move to direction. So a couple of things in here that I do is on the awake method, I get the goal. So I need to know where the agent is gonna be aiming to get to. So I need a reference of that. So I basically just go transform parent, 
get component in children, and then give me that component. So if I go into Unity, so we're looking at the player here. So what I'm saying is, okay, give me the parent. And then in the parent, find the goal. So it's going to find this component. It's going to get this component, and it's going to know, oh, okay, so that is the goal that I need to reach to, and that has a collider. So, so I know that when the chicken gets to here, there's going to be a collision happening. I'm going to be triggering that collision, and I'm going to be sending an event to the agent saying, hey, I hit the goal. So congratulations, you're going to get a point. So that's how that, that works. But in this instance, I'm just getting a reference to that. I am getting the original position of the chicken. And this is something that I'm going to be removing, so don't worry about that. And then this is going to be the life cycle of the chicken. So we're, you know, we're starting on the on episode begin. Then we collect the observations. We're looking around the area. And we're also going to be using the update method, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And then also as we, you know, as we go through every episode, we're going to be getting actions. And those are the actions that are going to tell us you know, where the chicken needs to be moving to. So in some cases, you're going to be moving to the idle. Some cases are going to be left, right, or forward. I'll show you that as well. And then I have a couple methods in here. One to give points to the chicken. In this case is going to be a point you know, given to them. And then we're going to be subtracting an amount, updating stats, and then heuristic method to be able to basically send actions when we're capturing that information from the, from the actual input. So it's going to go back up and, and just kind of go into every one of these in detail. So, Couple of things that I wanted to do when the chicken started, I want to make sure that I'm resetting the local position because if I, let's say that I go back into Unity and the chicken is moving and I am a visual person and that's why I go back and forth. But if I keep going forward and I hit the tree, I want to make sure that I go back, right? So in order for me to go back is I need to change the, the chicken local position to the original position and also the location that I was telling the chicken to go back to the, you know, to the original position. That way I can reset it back and we can start over. I'm also, I also found instances where these cars were basically making the chicken, you know, rotate and they were bumping them and it was changing the rotation. So I'm changing the local rotation back to the quaternion identity and that works really well. And then I'm also changing the velocity. We're going to be removing these. So I don't think we need to, we need to worry about that. Let me go ahead and do this. There we go. So the next thing that I'm also doing is, so this is going to happen on episode begin. Then we need to collect the observations. These are observations that work for me. This is not, like I said on the previous video, this is not the right or wrong way to do it. I'm only capturing six observations right now here, but I'm capturing a ton of observations by using the ray perception sensor. And luckily, the way that this works now is based on these settings, like right now I have, let's see, I have I have 10 rays per direction, but I could I could increase it or I could decrease it. So if you only find out that you only need six rays, then only do six rays if it's performing well to you. But if you want to get a lot of detailed observations, maybe you, you need to do that, you know, and basically push that number up. So let me go ahead and change this back to, to six, I think I had. Let me go ahead and undo. Undo. I did I did have six. So I think six in our case, let me go. Oh, actually I had 10. So I think 10 in my case work well. And since we're on this component, let's go ahead and look at this component really quick. So a couple of things that you need to tell this component and they're going to be added to the player is you need to tell it what kind of things you want these rays to be capturing. So in my case, I want this, this component to be looking at walls because I want to know if I'm colliding with walls. I want to know if I'm colliding with a car. I want to know if I'm getting to a goal. And I want to know if I'm basically hitting a tree because these are all the different elements that I have in here. That are basically the elements that we're discussing here. We have a car, we have a tree, we have a goal, and we have walls. So, so those are things that are really important to remember. So those are things that I want this to be, you know, evaluating every time we are walking through the area. So the other things, these are tags, right? So you're going to have to tag your components in here. Like if I look at the car and we go and look at the car, he, the car has a car, and, and that car is a tag that I created. I also have walls, I also have a goal, and I also have a tree. So if we look at the walls and I look at the wall component, this one, it's going to be a square, so I have four different walls. Each one of these walls I have in transparent, so I didn't really need a, a mesh render showing, so I just basically disable the mesh render because there's really not need. If there's a collider, it's going to be able to, to see that collider and evaluate the collision, but you can see that the walls have that. And if I look at the, the actual goal, you can see that the goal also has that. 
And the last one, you can see it's going to be the tree. So if I look at the tree component, you're going to see that the trees are also have a collider and they also have a tag of trees. So let's go ahead and go back into the player. And then everything else in here is just basically up to you. So if I want to change these spheres, the collision of the spheres, so you can see that if I increment that number, the rays are not going to be able to go through. And that's because they're colliding with the floor. So you got to make sure that those ones are set up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. So mine works best when I do 0.3 because of how I set up this area. But you might work better with a higher number depending on, you know, what area you're trying to create. And then you also can designate the length, also the mass of the ray or the ray layer mask. And also if you want to basically stack them and the different colors that you can you can have on those rays. I just left it as default and then just activated the basically the settings that work for me. So that's what this component is. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity and look at this. So in addition to those rays, I'm also capturing the position of myself. In my case, I'm the chicken, right? So I want to basically add an observation on the chicken. I also want to add an observation on the goal. So what is the goal going to be? So I didn't add observations for the other elements like the tree and the car because I'm already doing that through the ray. So I think in this case, I could have probably removed this. I just, this works for me. So I ended up leaving it in there. It, it actually gave me really good results. So that's what all observations are going to be is what the chicken is going to be able to go through and what is going to be observing to make better decisions. So the other things that I'm going to be walking you through is the update. So let's leave that one for the end because I want to show you the next piece. So now that I collected observations, now that I, well, now that I, that I started the episode, I reset the position of the chicken, I collected observation. We need to, based on those observations, we need to say, you know what, TensorFlow, tell me what's happening. ML agents, tell me what's happening. Tell me your best guess of what the movement of the agent needs to be. So that's what this is going to be doing. I'm going to check, okay, if the movement is currently in progress, I'm not going to do another movement. So the reason why I'm doing the update here is because I want to be able to move, do a, basically a movement in a, in a smooth manner. So I'm going to be moving every frame. And then, you know, based on, based on delta time, time to speed, I'm going to move into, if I'm moving to the right, I'm going to say, you know what, the right value, if I go here to this element, let's say that the direction changes to right and the value is going to be two. So what I do is I say, okay, you know what, move two, I'm going to create a new vector. I'm going to grab the local position and let's say that I'm going to be moving just one. The, the step is going to be just one direction. It's going to be basically one step. So in that case, the, this is going to be the value of X plus the step amount, which is going to be five. So we're going to go zero and then we're going to go five here. So I'm going to move to the right five meters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, the, the position of Y, I don't need to change it. Position of Z, I don't need to change it because I'm only going to be moving on, on the right direction. And then I'm going to change the, the move to direction enum to be right because I want to make sure that I have that set. And then I also going to say, I'm going to tell the, on, I'm going to tell the system that I'm currently moving. So I don't want to keep capturing directions. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, okay, next time we get on action receive, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I'm not going to move the agent again because the agent is still trying to move to the right. So then when I get to the update, the update statement, I'm going to say, okay, if the movement is currently in progress, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to grab the local position and I'm going to use vector three that move towards to basically grab the current position and then go to the move to position, which I already calculated here. And then the speed is going to be based on the delta time, time the speed. So that's basically going to add movement in a, in a basically a smooth manner. So it's going to move on every, you know, on every frame in by using the vector, vector three move forward. And then I'm going to calculate, you know what, if I reach the, the distance between the local position to the move to, and it's less than or equal to this value, then that means that I reached my destination. So I'm going to change moving progress to false. And that way we can, if we get a new direction, now we can tell, we can allow the system to, the chicken to move. So in the next, next time we get a direction, we're going to say, okay, you know what, moving progress is false, but let's say that I want to move forward this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that same exercise that I show you. And we're going to go through here and then I'm going to calculate the distance, which reach the destination. And then, you know, we're, we're just going to keep going through that loop. So it's going to move to that way. And then we're going to go move forward five more meters. So we're going to go five here. And then we're also going to move, you know, five here. So in the, in the instance of, of forward, 
In this case, we're going to do z, right? So we got to add the value to z. So and that's why I'm adding c, the local position, that's z, plus the step amount. So hopefully that makes sense. I know I'm speaking a lot and I'm losing my voice. But, but so far, we have on episode begin, we're collecting observations. We are basically getting actions from ML agents. ML agents send us the action. And then based on those actions, we move, we move the chicken. So once we go through that exercise, there's a couple of things that we need to consider, right? Like in the cases where we are colliding with a tree or we are colliding with a car or we're getting to the goal. So those are the cases that we need to start rewarding the agents. And those are the ones that I want to explain to you. So these key points I explained to you in the previous video, it was, I think it was called that as well. But if it wasn't, all this is doing is allowing other classes to basically give a reward to the chicken. In our case, it's just going to be the goal. That's the only, the only, you know, the only time where we're going to be getting, getting the chicken a reward. And then I'm also updating st stats. I'm also ending the episode because at this point we already got a successful episode. And then I'm also showing you a great material, which I call it a success material, just to denote that this was a successful, you know, iteration. So the other method that I also want to explain to you, it's going to be the takeaway points. So this one is going to be similar to this, except we're going to be penalizing the agent for not doing a good job. And I try many numbers in here. I try a negative one and it was way too high. I try a negative, I think it was a negative 0.1. And I think that still was too high where the agent was getting, you know, penalized too much and it wasn't learning. So this number is the one that worked best for me. And I'm going to show you how I came up with that number. I'm also updating the stats and in the episode. And in this case, you know, the agent failed, so we want to show a failure material. And we want to show it for half a second, and that's what I'm passing in, you know, half a second in here. And then this is basically just to update the couple of values and also the UI. The other method that I always tell people to start with is going to be the heuristic, right? So normally the, the development process of this starts by, you know, deciding where the player is going to be moving to. So I always start with this meta because you need to set up your area first before you do anything else. So you need to make sure how the agent is going to be moving to before you can actually start considering all the other scenarios. So in my case, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a chicken. It's going to move forward. It's going to move to the right. It's going to move to the left. And it's going to stay idle. So what I did here is I overrode the heuristic meta. I'm basically passing the, the array of floats, which is what the, what the agent base class does. And then I'm saying, you know what, if I'm idle, the value is going to be zero. If I'm moving to the left, and I'm pressing the, the left key on my keyboard, the value is going to be one. If I want to move to the right, I need to, you know, press the right key on my keyboard and the value is going to be two. But if I want to move forward, the value that I'm going to be setting is going to be three. And these are values that I saw on some of the examples that Unity provided. So I kind of kept them the same. So zero for idle, one for one movement, two for another movement, and then three for another movement direction. And now that I, that I explained to you how, you know, how, observations work and how many we have and also how many directions we're going to be taking. How does that relate to the behavior? And that's what I want to show you next. So when you're trying to come up with those and you look at the behavior parameters, you need to decide how many observations you're going to be capturing. So in this case, it's six and it is six because in this case, I'm only capturing six observations, one for X, one for Y and one for Z on the local position. That's why that is three and also three more for the actual goal. This one right here, it's going to have, I think, about 120 something different observations. But locally, Unity is doing that behind the scenes. So we don't need to do the math to find out how many we're getting here, plus the ones that we're you know, doing ourselves. So Unity is doing that for you. So don't worry too much about that. Just know that the ones that you're defining in the code are the ones that you have to worry about you know, telling the system to capture. Because if you're capturing more and this is set to a 3, you're going to get an error. OK, so stack vectors I haven't used and I'm not using on this, on this example yet. So I might cover it on, on the future videos. But for now, I just set that to a 1. The vector action, I set it to discrete because we're getting discrete values, right? This is not a continuous value. This is going to be a value of 0, 1, 2, and 3, meaning that we, we're basically going to have finite numbers that we're going to be using for finite numbers that we're going to be using for the direction of the agent. So that's why I said that to a value of four. So it's one, two, three, and four. And then the other thing that I did here is I have a model. I already trained, I have trained data. But I'm going to show you how, how you start with that. And I did on, on the previous video, but 
normally you start without this file and then when you train the file gets generated and then you associate that file with this field here which is going to be the the file with extension and in this is the inference device is going to be cpu because we're capturing with cpu i might do gpu in the future because i have a pretty powerful gpu but for now let's just use cpu behavior type is going to be default for most cases except when you're starting development so if you want it to be heuristic because you're going to have one of the agents you know be capturing some of the actions through here then and i do that when i start I start doing development I change one of the agents. I only have one agent in, in that case, one area with an agent. And I set it to heuristic. Once I get the movement going, then I change it. You know, one, once I know that it's going to work, then I change it to default, meaning that in this case, the Python tensor, you know, tensor flow, whatever you want to call it, it's the one that is sending you the information. That's the one that is going to decide what actions to take. So the other field is going to be team ID and also use child sensors. Those ones I just left by default, I didn't change anything in there so that basically covers everything about the agent so now the question is Dilma, how do you handle the collisions between you know the tree collisions between the car and also the goal so let me just go ahead and show you how those ones work these are very simple like in the case of the goal all i'm doing is just getting a reference to the agent and that is the first thing that i do here and then on the trigger enter this is going to be the method that gets generated by the collider it's going to say okay am i colliding with the player if I am colliding with the player, I just basically just debugging that log points earn as road was crossed. This means that I actually crossed the road and I'm also just calling, you know, the give points method that I just show you. In the cases of obstacles, so in this case, it could be a wall or it could be a tree. I also designated an enum here because I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was colliding with. It's more for debugging purposes than anything else because that's the only place where I use it. But I just tell the system what you know what the obstacle is going to be in this case it's going to be the default is going to be a wall i also get a reference to the agent and that's what i'm caching in here and then i'm saying on collision enter if i'm colliding with the with the player in this case it's going to be a negative case means meaning that we're going to be taking points away from the agent by penalizing the the agent and giving them a negative reward and that's what i do you know call the takeaway points and i'm also printing out you know debug that law collision obstacle type so that i know what I'm colliding with. So that's what that is, the obstacle, also the goal. The actual car, it's a little bit different and this one is, it's more about the movement of the car. So each one of these cars have different properties. So if I go into the car itself, they also have, you know, a box collider. Let me go ahead and get close to this one. They have, of course, a mesh filter, the mesh render. This is because I had a different object before. So it was easier for me just to you know, remove the, disable the mesh render here and just add one of the new models as a child and just leave the same behaviors that I have in here. That's why that one is disabled. And the box collider so that I know, you know, if I'm colliding with anything and then rigid body as well I have in here. And then also the object that tells it, you know, how fast it needs to move and then what direction it needs to move. So in this case, I can designate whether I'm gonna be moving south so when I say south, I'm talking about two different directions in here. South is going to be on the x-axis, so it's going to be that way. And then if I want to move north, it's going to be on the opposite of the x-axis, so it's going to be a negative x. And that's why those two are set up that way. And I also can, I don't want to designate the same speed to every car because I thought doing that was going to be boring. Plus, the agents are really smart. It was going to find a pattern and it was going to beat the level every time the same way. So what I ended up doing is adding a minimum speed and a maximum speed. So you can see that this is a, basically a slider that I can say, you know what, I'm going to go from 11 to 19 and I'm going to generate a random value from those, you know, those two ranges and it's going to be inclusive. So it's going to include 11, 18 and also 19.4. Or I can say, you know, what, I want to go a lot slower. Maybe this car, I want to go from, you know, 2.3, maybe to 5.3. So it'll generate a speed between those two numbers. And then this is how far the, I want the agent, the, the actual car to go to. So if you look at the, the position here and we look at this value, it's basically as simple as, I wanted to keep it simple because I wanted the code to be simple. What I'm doing is as soon as I reach that number, so you guys can see 18.64, as soon as I reach that number, I'm going to reset in the position and basically restarting the car at that position so I can keep moving and looking at it and making it look like there's new cars coming. It's actually the same car that is basically getting the local position reset. So that's what that is. Let me go ahead and undo that. 
So let's go ahead and look at the, co the code for the car. So I have a car direction. This is going to be the enum that I show you. That could be either south or north. I have the minimum speed, and this is how I do the minimum and max numbers. I got that from doing procedural generator and, and doing some different demos. But range is really cool because you can tell the system what the minimum value is going to be and also what the maximum value is going to be. And it also creates a slider on the inspector. And I set the value to be the minimum speed is going to be 5. The maximum speed is going to be 10. I also have a variable for the speed. This is going to be, I used to, I was hard coding this value before. And then what I do is I do the randomization and then I set the value based on those numbers. The next value is going to be the maximum distance is going to be telling the system the cars, when they reach that distance, they're going to be, we're going to be resetting their position. I also need a reference to the agent because we need to know, we need to tell the agent that he actually collided with a car. So I have a reference to that. Also the original position because we need to restore the position of the cars. So in the awake method, what I do is I get the agent reference, I get the original position, and I also randomize the speed. So I just do random that range minimum speed and then maximum speed and that's going to be giving me a random a random car speed and then the update method is the one that is deciding you know at what point do we need to at what point do we need to actually reset the position so in the case that we're going north we need to check to make sure the value of x has reached the maximum distance if, if it has then i know that i need to reset it and i do the same thing with the with the x value when we when we're hitting the south position and I'm also changing the rotation because I found out that sometimes the cars were the cars were getting bended by doing collisions with the with the chickens. And then this is basically what I'm doing to to move the the cars. I am changing the local position and calling this method. And this is the method the method that decides you know how fast it needs to move. So I'm just saying okay if I'm going north, I'm gonna take the local position of x and then subtract delta time time speed. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do a sum of that value. And then I also use, I actually don't use this anymore. I thought I did. I was using that in a different video. Yeah, it looks like I'm not using that. So what I'm going to do is I can probably just remove it. Let me make sure that everything compiles. There we go. And then on collision enter, this is really important because if we're colliding with the, you know, if we're colliding with the car, we want to make sure that we're taking, we're taking points away. Just like I did with the obstacles, with the tree and also, you know, other objects. I thought that I was using the obstacles for, I'm actually just using it for walls and trees. I'm not using it for cars because cars themselves have more logic. So that's what I'm doing that in here. So that basically covers the agent, the car, the goal, and then the walls and the trees and how we do and how I actually implement it, that functionality. So now what I want to do is I want to show you some of the TensorFlow data. So this is one run that I did where I actually do did about 1 million iterations. So if I look at this graph here, let's actually make it, see if I can make it bigger. There we go. If I look at this graph here in about this point right here, this is about 1 million different steps. So this means that we went a million steps to, in order for us to train this agent. So when, we, when we're starting, the agent was starting to, you know, get a reward and perhaps he was getting negative rewards, negative rewards. And then he started to get positive, positive, positive. And then the, the algorithm, the actual machine learning algorithm said, okay, I'm going to start doing more tests and, and try to get negative rewards. And he wasn't doing really good here, but then he started to learn. He started to get more knowledgeable about the area. And that's why it started to get up, 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 up until we reach, and this is all being smooth. So if I change the smoothness here, I think we reach a number. Let me just go ahead and change the smoothness all the way to zero. And then I think I can just let me go ahead and go back here. There we go. So when we reached this point, we were at about 0 0.96. It was actually way better than I thought. So it's 0 0.96. That means that, you know, most of the time he was doing good. He was getting every time to the goal, except, you know, a very small percentage of the time. And that's, you know, this is something that I use quite a bit. I don't know what, I don't know what happened here. This looks weird. But anyways, it, you know, I started to get up, 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 and then I started to learn. The other thing that is also helpful, like if we look at, if we look at the episode length, at the beginning of the episode length, let me go back to, let me go ahead and restart this. And another thing that you also want to consider is the episodes might take a long time at the beginning, and then they're going to be taking less time, and then they're going to start taking more and more in time. These are, these are two metrics to to look at. So they might not take too long because they're failing right away, 
or they might be taking way too long because they're getting to the goal. So you got to look at this graph and you got to look at this graph to decide, you know, how the agents are doing. And if they're doing OK, then what, what can you do to make it better? Or can you are you penalizing the agent too much? And, and that happened with me when I was penalizing the agent at the beginning. So let me go ahead and jump into Unity and I'm going to show you. Let's say that we wanted to train this agent from the beginning and I want to compare how the agent does at the beginning versus, you know, how it's doing right now. So one of the things that we could do is I can go into my PowerShell and I already have this already set up. So I'm going to run mlagents-learn and this is a YAML file that I created. I am, I'm also going to be checking everything. And the run ID in this one is going to be video test. It's going to be for the YouTube video. So if you look in here, you can do, you can look at multiple runs. This is going to be the final run. This is the one that I'm using right now, the brain that I'm using. But what if I wanted to do a new brain, right? Like I wanted to train this agent one more time. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to hit enter. This is going to start the ML agents environment. You're going to see the unit logo. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my area. I'm going to go into my player and I'm going to remove the actual model from it because I don't want to use that model. I want to train the agent from the beginning. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to now every single one of these should not have a brain, should not have a model. And this is the model. I don't know if they're called brains or not, but this is basically the results of the training. And none of them should have it, so none of them have it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to hit play and I'm going to show you how this looks. So let's hit play and let's me go ahead and open up the PowerShell. It's going to start going into training and let me see if I can resize this window a little bit. There we go. That way we can see a lot more of the scene. And I'm going to leave this running for perhaps about, let's do about five minutes. And we can look at the graph and see what we're getting after this is completed. All right, guys, so I left it running for about, let's see, 784,000 seconds. And I was able to get about 0.7. And the last time I run it, I run it for about a million iterations. This is about, let's see, a fourth of that, almost 400,000. So, I mean, we got some good results, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 on some of them. And so I want to show you another thing. If you go into TensorFlow, I want to show you how that looks. And hopefully we can see the latest run. So I'm just going to go ahead and run TensorBoard, log deer results. We're going to open it up in here. We should be able to see the video test now, which is the one that we just ran. We can also run comparisons, which I think is really cool. You can see that this is actually trending similar to how the other one was. So as you're making changes on the actual agents, if you make changes to the parameters, every time you write, you know, you create a new run with a specific unique ID, then it's going to be added to here. And then you can run comparisons like, I know this one was learning, it looks like it's trending better. Like in here we have this big gap. This one it's kind of, you know, it's moving, it's, it's moving up and it keeps trending up. And we're actually getting above the previous line. So I kind of like that. And we can also smooth the lines if we wanted to, to kind of get a better idea. So in my opinion, this is gonna do better than it did before. I don't know why that is. It could be because they changed a the parameter on one of the cars, the speed is different, or some other variable, maybe I move a tray. So these are things that you need to keep track of whenever you know, you're training your agents. So I think I'm just gonna call it good, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know. Also, if you like this video and you want more videos in machine learning, let me know in the comments because that's really gonna help me and understand what you're looking for. And also know that this is gonna be available in GitHub as of tonight. So look for that, it's going to be available there. And if you feel like you, know, you want to you know, support me in Patreon, so that I can keep doing things like this, please do so because it's really gonna help me in making a lot more videos. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about machine learning or anything that I cover in the channel, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out my patreon.com site where I'm basically posting early access source code and also what I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much guys.